Hey guys, so I'm in Singapore, it's the middle of May. Uh, Singapore has done an amazing job dealing with the coronavirus. And you can see that some things have changed, obviously. It's um, one of the things that's changed uh, in, are these attempts to encourage or nudge people towards social distancing. Now, what's really interesting is something that I would not have expected, which is what we're going to see in a, in a couple of minutes. And that's going to be the long lines that we see uh, outside the grocery stores. We always see people with, with um, grab food and grab bike. Um, you know, people still have to have food. So what's interesting about what's happening now, public transportation, obviously something that's essential. Um, but you know, traffic is almost the same as it was before. And what's interesting is that during this time, we're going to be able to figure out what is essential and what is not essential. And so what it looks like, just based on this little neighborhood, that public transportation is essential, delivery vehicles are essential, and of course you've got grocery stores that are now unfortunately filled with people just waiting to get basic sort of essentials. And so how does that work? It might take them about half an hour just to get in. And these are probably the hardest workers you'll see. The frontliners. So before you can go in, they can get somebody doing a scan. You have to sort of like bend over and bend forward. And at that point, they'll take your temperature. If your temperature is okay, you're allowed to come in. That stand's been up there for a couple of weeks now. So nothing, nothing's changed really. So for the most part, life kind of goes on. And it's an opportunity for governments to figure out how to make more day-to-day -day improvements in people's lives. And also to figure out which suppliers are most loyal and most efficient. And I think that might be the most uh, important part of this coronavirus lockdown along with all the different security procedures. Mainly, who's able to continue motivating their employees, who's able to continue being manufacturing existing products, who's able to continue, who's able to escalate scale, improve scale without going bankrupt um, or taking on un unnecessary debt. Of course, there's another essential worker, Singaporean police, off uh, sorry, post office. So, you know, it's sort of interesting how, and I know I use the word interesting a lot because we do live in, inter in interesting times. And there's a, an express van that's coming up. It's a red van that you just, it's a red van that you just saw. And I apologize if my voice was muffled because I was trying to talk through a mask, um, which is what people are obviously wearing. So. The, the industry, of course, cannot survive just on the basis of safety products. Uh, 3M, one of the most reputable companies in the United States, actually witnessed an overall drop in uh, overall revenue and so on, because while demand for a lot of its safety products went up, it, the demand went down in other businesses uh, which, of course, you know, made revenue worse off than it would have otherwise been. So here we are. Let's see if we can sort of figure things out. Uh, you can see that it's an interesting situation in Singapore as well because you've got this Chinese New Year, which happened a while ago, and you're going to have, at some point, uh, Aid Mubarak, which is called, also called Hari Raya here. And that's basically it, you know. You, um, you, you can see, I also see that within this complex, and you can't see it now, but um, people will come and leave like door, like ready-made meals.
for people here, and they'll just leave it outside the door, like right over here. Uh, and that's one way that the community social services is responding. Uh, so you have this interaction between private, nonprofit, uh, and public, and the question is, how is it all going to work out in the end? Um, and I guess that's, that all remains to be seen.